praise the Lord and welcome back to Nightline. I am absolutely positive if you were able to tune in to that first hour, you were thoroughly blessed and impressed with Rayshawn McCauley, author of Till I Grow, and then her friend and sister in Christ, Nicole Gantpam, as they shared with our viewing audience and shared with all of us and just deeply, deeply touched those of us even in the studio tonight about what it means to confront cancer, what it means to conquer cancer, and what it means to come out on the other side of tribulation, a tribulation situation, not bitter, not bitter, but better for the glory of God. We have uh, embraced the theme of tonight's program from Romans 5, 3, and 4, where the Word of God says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. I tell you tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't care how dark your world is, I don't care how big the question marks are that are looming over your life right now, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God and there is hope even right now. Those numbers are on the screen just for you. We're going to go back to Marcel McManus tonight and he's going to bring us some beautiful instrumental music. In fact, this will be one that you recognize. This will be one that you will utilize in a great way to the glory of God and the encouragement of your own soul. It is well.
we'll thank God only because of Jesus, only because of Christ can we say it is well with my soul. I'm not going to take the time to share the story behind the song that Marcel just played, the old hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Horatio Spafford wrote that after losing his own children to death. You say, that sounds morbid. It is morbid. It is dark. It is heavy. But folks, the hope we have in Jesus Christ can face life as it is and sometimes life as we would wish a thousand times over that it was not. We can still say it is well. It is well with my soul. We appreciate those of you who have called in tonight. We have some who have called in and they've asked that we pray for physical needs, and I assure you we do that as soon as we get those requests. We have one who called in tonight. The caller was on the other side of what we've talked about and just lost her um, 49-year-old daughter to cancer, if I'm reading that right. But knows she's safe in the arms of the Lord. He is still her helper and wanted us to know how much she appreciated their testimony. Regardless of what doctors say, God has the final word. So thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much, Marcel, for you. ministering in the name of Jesus tonight. I have a dear, dear friend, lifelong friend, who just sent me a text while you were playing, and he said, that will bless Wow. You'll bless it assurance. Wow. And it has God blessed it has mm. blessed us tonight. Jesus. Jesus, obviously, is is more than just than just a, a side a side attachment to your life. Mm -hmm. He's more than just a Sunday thing for you. He he is he is the, the focal point and piece of your life. Is that right? That's right. How long's that been? Um, that's been quite some time. I grew up in the church and um, raised in the church. My great grandfather was a pastor, uh -huh. and I grew up surrounded by church, surrounded by knowing God. But it's a difference when you begin to build a personal relationship with Him. Right. Back in 2008, um, I gave my life to Christ, and I began to develop that relationship and spending time and understanding the Word. And when you have that in your life, it makes a big difference to be able to have Jesus in your life. Not saying that everything is going to be perfect. Right. Not saying that you will do everything right. But it's just something about having him in your life. It changes everything about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so amazing. That, that's that been kind of the, the unintentional but yet very obvious theme of the program tonight. That's right. I, I noticed uh, early on the spirit of God, the kindred spirit of God, God. just bore witness with all of us when these ladies were talking yes, that man. that sometimes the God who who chooses to bring us to it mm -hmm. instead of just making it disappear he says I'm going to bring you through it. I get through it. My goodness. That's one thing I've been saying to myself lately. God, if you can just bring me through it. I know one thing about it. He get the glory and the victory. Because many times we want the Lord to take us out of some situations. Uh -huh. We don't want to endure hardship. We don't want to endure some things. And some things are just a testing of our faith to see where we stand and trust God like we say that we do. But when trials and tribulations and things come, our faith get wavered sometimes. Sure. And we feel like giving up. But versus saying, Lord, take me out, it's saying, Lord, just carry me through. Come because on. there'll be somebody in the midst of what we're going through. If we just go through the other side, we're going to be able to help pull somebody else through. But if we stop and don't go through, we'll miss the opportunity to be able to say, I went through that before. God carried me and I learned something from it. And that's one thing about going through. Yeah. Lord, just let me go through. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. You, you're, you're preaching tonight. You're My preaching God. tonight. Because that's what the word says. That we glory in tribulation. Oh my goodness! Yes. Also. Yes. Also, not not just in in uh, in in recognitions and accomplishments mm. and what the world would call successes, right. but we glory. Mm. We worship. Yes. We shout the Hallelujah. victory in tribulations. Yes. Because we know that's right. That those tribulations work patience, patience, or perseverance. That's right. 
That's right. And perseverance works experience and experience hope. That's right. If we begin to glory in the things that we go through, God can use us more. And many times people don't want to glory in it because they don't want to have that patience. Right. They don't want to have that perseverance. Right. They want things to be so easy. But if we say, God, if you give me the strength to get through what I'm going through, I can be a light to someone. Because there's somebody who's going through. Like these ladies were talking tonight, telling their testimony. We never know who's going to come behind us and need to hear what we got to say. But if we're not willing to go through and say, God, use me as your vessel. And some people don't want to say that because it is a tough thing when you're telling God to use you. Oh, my. We don't know what is going to come. My, my. We don't know what's going to happen. But the thing about it is, I thank God for my life and the things that I've gone through. I have not done everything right in my life, but one thing about it, I said, God, if you can allow my past and the things I've gone through, allow me to be a witness to someone and let them know yeah. that God is a deliverer. He is a healer. Yeah. He's He's everything that we yeah. need if we allow him to be that in Hallelujah. our lives. Yes. If we allow that to be. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, I, I, I do want to uh, talk to you about your, your latest single. Mm -hmm. What is your latest single? Um, my latest one is I've decided to make Jesus my choice. You um, sang that a while ago. I did. Um, the first song tonight. Um, I grew up singing that song in, uh, with my family growing up, and I grew up in a musical family, and that was a very popular song growing up in my family. And um, but a couple of years ago, I had to sing at a Christmas gala, and I was asked to sing, and I said, Lord, what is it you want me to sing? And that song I've decided to mm -hmm. make Jesus my choice was the one He wanted me to sing, and the glory fell in that place. And, and my producer Luther Warlaw, he said, the anointing is on that song. Yeah, you need to. To release that and so today almost a year later i have re released amen. that song amen where are you from originally lions georgia okay yes born and raised in lions georgia actually born in vidalia but raised in lions georgia and uh, my mother she um she, she raised me she she actually sung with me sung and sung while she was pregnant up until i was born so music has just been in my family for a long time. And my uncle, uh, Pastor Julian Holland, he trained us with music and how to hear the chords and hear notes. And uh. so I'm just surrounded by music and my cousins and, that thing, and uh, everyone back home. So we just grew up in a music family, and uh, I'm grateful. What, what takes the ministry of, of music from the place of, of just being music, mm -hmm. just, just being a good song, to, to being a life? changing experience where patience works experience what makes music a life-changing experience for for not only the the listener but also the leader well when you begin to look and realize the the, the lyrics of certain songs and and the mood or whatever the music is knowing that you're you're using to minister to god more than anything when you're in your alone time with him and you begin to worship, you begin to praise, and you begin to set that side of time and say, you know, God, I've come to worship you. Yeah. Because when you begin to communicate with him and commune with him, then the glory begin to fall. Then it's not about you. But at the end of the day, when you begin to realize after you done came to in the presence in the presence of the Lord, you're going to then connect with other people. Then when your music begins to, uh, to radiate and your singer begin to radiate, not for us to get the glory, but for him to get the glory. It is important that we understand the importance of music that he have created for us to use. Yeah. And we're able to help change the lives of many people by, by just the words, it is well with my soul. Why is it well with my soul? My goodness. Because he loves us so to know that it is well. When peace like a river ascended my way, when you begin to think, I will bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me, why would I bless the Lord? He's been so good to me. He's an awesome God. And it's just amazing the awesome things that we can do through music to impact so many people. But most of all, glorify and honor God. I love many times I can be by myself at the church and mm -hmm. just play and sing to God. Mm. Sometimes I only have to sing anything and just feel his presence because it is him that we move and have our being. It is him that we need in our everyday life. Yeah. If we take that time, even the Bible talks about singing songs, songs of him. But many times people don't take time to sing songs. It don't have to be in the perfect tune. You don't have to have the perfect lyrics. But if you're singing to him. There you go. Yes. There yes. you go. There, there is something to be said about about having private worship. Mm. Now, I, I don't say this to embarrass her, and I don't say this to exalt her because uh, she doesn't need to be embarrassed, and and she doesn't want to be exalted. But my wife has played piano for many, many years wow. since she was just a, a young girl, mm -hmm. and sometimes Marcel, of course, we're empty nesters now. At least that's what they call us. <laughs> And I will, I will pull into the garage 
and she will have been there by herself, and I'll hear that piano. And sometimes I just, I just say, surely the mm. presence of the Lord yes. is in this place. There's something about music that, that can, that can I, I think, I think, and, and you know more about it than I do, but I think there's something about music that, that will either, you, either take you in the right direction mm -hmm. or the wrong direction. I agree. Music is so powerful, so important. It's, you can be going through a lot of things in your life, and the right music and the spirit of the music can drive away depression. Yeah. Drive away fear. It did for King Saul. It, exactly. And many times if I find myself going through some things, I begin to play and begin to drive different things that are out of my mind and things that I'm going through. Because if you're not careful, you'll entertain so much stuff through music. That's why we have to be careful of what type of music that we listen to with certain lyrics because it can get into your spirit. Right. Yeah. It makes a difference. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think a lot, Marcel, about the time when King Jehoshaphat was leading the people of God in Second Chronicles 20 and they were in war mm -hmm. and they were outnumbered and, and they uh, had, had very, very little resources as far as, as, as weaponry is concerned. But the, the Lord said, just praise me. That's right. Just praise me. Mm -hmm. what, what can happen mm. when God's people praise him in the face? Oh, my goodness. Of a, of a situation that could otherwise be overwhelming. When you begin to bless and praise God in the midst of your storm, in the midst of the situation, God can heal, he can deliver, he can set free, he can do things, he can open doors if we begin to tap in and to begin to praise him. When you begin to praise the Lord, it begins to break the shackles. It begins yeah. to cause healing to come into a room. When we get together on one accord, we begin to praise and lift him up because he's the one to be lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. When we begin to praise and worship God, it begins to usher in the presence of the Lord in such a way where his glory begins to fall. And no matter what it is that we're going through, no matter what it is that that we need, he began to pour out his blessings. He began to pour out his healing. He began to pour out his deliverance because we begin to connect with him, the ultimate leader, the ultimate God that we serve. Yeah. He began to just usher his presence in. And there's so many things that we can receive from him if we just tap in and by faith believe what we're doing. Right. Those things should come to pass. It's that, it's that glory of God. Yes. That sets men free. It? Yes, it is. And then who, who the Son of Man sets free? He's free indeed. If free you want to be free, you can be free. Marcel, what about Acts chapter 16 where in the midnight hour, mm. Paul and Silas, My they God. began to pray. Yes, they did. And what else? Praise. Praise. That's right. When you begin to praise God, even in your midnight hour, yeah. Even in the midst of what you may be going through in your life, you you begin to praise God. You begin to see your, your situation change. You begin to see Tell your it. life begin to change. I don't care how bad it may seem. The Bible said that life and death lies in the power of the tongue. It's what you speak. Even in your darkest hour, even in I the weakest that. point of your life, when you don't think that God is with you, when you think he has left you, his word said, I'll never leave you. That's right. one man that will never leave you, nor forsake you. Right. But he will always be with us. But even at the midnight hour, Right. Do you got a praise on the inside of you? Right. That's my question tonight. Do you watching? Do you have a praise on the inside of you? No matter what you're going through, no matter what you may face with, no matter what the enemy have said about you and what the report of the enemy have said, what does God say about it? We should give him a praise because he's worthy to be praised. He's hallelujah. worthy to be magnified and hallelujah. he's worthy to be glorified. Let's lift up the name of God Amen. and give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I give him glory. Yes. I give him glory. I give him hallelujah. glory tonight. Mm. If the Lord were to lay it on somebody's heart, if he were to lead somebody to have you come and minister and speak and, and, uh, and just worship. And I, I, I've never been with you in a service, but I've just got a feeling uh, you just like to follow him. Amen. That's you, right. You don't have an agenda. That's you, right. You don't, you're not a showman, are you? No, no, sir. Not at all. But you're a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. A true worshiper. The Bible said, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If yeah. we begin to be about ourselves and build ourselves up, God cannot be glorified. Oh my. But if we begin to hide ourselves behind him and let him be magnified and put him up front, then true deliverance can come. Yeah. Then the true word of God can come forth. So when we begin to speak out of our mouth, we're not speaking out of our flesh, but we're speaking out of, out of the mouth of God. 
And when you begin to speak out of the mouth of God and people know that the anointing and the glory of God is in the place, healing, deliverance, whatever is needed in the building can take place. But people can find me on my website. Good. MarcelMcManusMusic.com. And uh, on the screen there, Marcel McManus Music. You can find me there. Find me there to um, book me to come to different events, or you want me to minister the Word of God. I just love to be a blessing to to, to the people of God. Because one thing about it, Jesus is soon to come. Yeah. But if we take the opportunity to yeah. allow God to use us in such a way to teach and preach the Word of God with truth and sim simplicity, His will can be done. Not for a show. Not for fortune and fame. Right. Many people are going out there for fortune and fame. Agree. And he going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I knew you not. They said, well, I, God, I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. Yeah. But they really didn't have the love of God. Yeah. They dress up. They have the right thing, the right car, the right message. And the message, message could be powerful. But the motive behind what we do is more important. There you go. The motive. There yes. you go. Where sin is, yes. grace does much more about Yes, it does. Hatred could very easily Ooh, be at an all-time high yes. in our country. But even where there's hate, it has to bow down to the love of God. Yes, it does. I want to tell you in the name of Jesus, I love you. I love you too, Pastor. I respect you yes, and sir. I appreciate you. Thank you. Would you do me one big favor? Yes, sir. Would you set that microphone down? I sure will. And go over to the piano in just a minute. Would you just play us off the air? I sure will. You go right ahead. God bless you. I am so grateful that Marcel McManus took the time this evening to come by Channel 16 in Greenville, South Carolina. You have been encouraged tonight, I sincerely hope and pray. Remember, tomorrow night from 5.30 till about 7.45, 8 o'clock, we will be having a Hallelujah Festival at His Vineyard Church in Greer. This is something that not just be a good thing for your kids, but it'd be a good thing for Mama Nim. It'd be a good thing for you. And if we can minister to you, if we can love you in the name of Jesus, you come on. Because whether we eat or drink or what things soever we do, we're to do all to the glory of God. May the title of this song be the prayer of your heart and the prayer of my heart and the prayer of our life. Marcel's going to play this as we go off the air tonight. It's a song we've sung many, many times at His Vineyard. It's entitled, Here I Am to Worship. God bless you and good night.